screen. So Sandhya or Mikesh, can you confirm that? Is my screen visible to all of you? Yes. Ma yes. Okay, thank you. So good morning, everyone. And thank you for joining on a weekend morning. So as you all know, that today's session will be on... Sorry. So today's session will be on building no-code integration solution using MuleSoft Composer, which will be given by Megesh. And talking about myself, I am Swati Agarwal. I am a senior Salesforce consultant at MarLabs. I am an INEX certified developer. And uh, here I have mentioned my Twitter and LinkedIn IDs. You can reach out to me over the mention IDs. Along with me, I'm having Sandhya. She is a Salesforce certified architect at UST Kochi. And she's a certified application architect. You can also reach out to her over the mentioned LinkedIn and Twitter handle. So talking about today's agenda, our speaker will share about MuleSoft Composer and for whom actually it is meant. And he'll also give a live demo of MuleSoft Composer with a real world use cases and uh, key considerations when using MuleSoft Composer. So all of the people who are new to MuleSoft, uh, so it's a good platform to learn, including me as well. I am not into MuleSoft, so I would looking forward to this session. And you can also have, uh, we'll be having a Q&A round uh, with Mikesh. So I'll request that everyone please put your questions in the Q&A tab so that Mikesh can take up those questions at the end of the session. You can reach out to us with on, on the mentioned Twitter handles, which is having our uh, Kochi developer group Twitter ID, me, mine and Sandhya's ID. And also, I have mentioned uh, both of our Trailblazer ID. You can drop us an email of what sessions you want us to present in the upcoming uh, months. So talking about our speaker, Mikesh is a Salesforce analyst at Digital uh, at Deloitte, and um, he has a good experience working in the Salesforce ecosystem. He is a MuleSoft certified mentor, and he has also worked on MuleSoft's AnyPoint platform and studio. Apart from this, he also has exposure to technologies like Heroku, VanillaJS, ReactJS, Node.js, NoSQL databases such as MongoDB and state management tools such as Redux. So he's all, yeah, he's a great mentor to, you know, learn for MuleSoft. So I'll stop sharing my screen and over to Mikesh so that he can quickly start up his session. Thank you, Swati, for that sweet introduction. Uh, I will share my screen. Uh, can you confirm if my screen is visible? Yes, it is visible. And there is a bar at the bottom, like a uh, hide button is there. If you can just, uh, yeah, hide this. Thank you. Yeah, it is visible. Um, so um, thank you all for joining in uh, in today's session. And today we will be going through how we will build no-code integration solutions using Mulesoft Composer. Uh, this is all about me as Swati introduced, uh, introduced about my, about me. I am a, I'm Megesh Shanoi. I am a Salesforce developer with two plus years of experience. I'm also a Salesforce and a MuleSoft certified developer, a uh, MuleSoft mentor. I am also awarded by MuleSoft with Up and Comers Award recently and was also featured by MuleSoft as Muley of the Month, which is in this month itself, just a couple of days back. I am also an active member of Salesforce Trailblazer Community Forum. So uh, let's get started, right? So the first question, what comes to into our mind is why to use automation? It's simply like we have to get up early in the morning. We don't have to move anything. The machines itself will come to us, comb us, and then make us ready. Have our food again, go back to sleep, right? This is why we are uh, building automations. Uh, apparently, it is not. 
so previously if you had thought about like working in a so in a company uh, right in 1980s so the operations were not were not uh, actually optimized right so as competition went on increasing the technology went on advancing currently the competition is so fierce that uh, the companies have to keep their margins very low right and in those margins they have to also operate and with that it came in, it came down to efficiency uh, efficiently using resources right so this is why we use automation it's because we need to improve efficiency improve uh, improve employee productivity focus on mission critical tasks which cannot be automated use resources efficiently accelerating expectations and do more with less because the margin is so low and companies have to defend uh, those margins right and because of which they came down to automation uh, make the best use of their resources which they have right they don't want to just simply go on hiring resources and do redundant task which can be automated very easily right so this is all about the business face a widening transformation delivery gap so as we mentioned that currently the technology is advancing so fast that even the, in the next 50 years we don't know what kind of technology it would be one thing in is sure in our mind ai ml would be there dominating the market but we don't know what kind of other technologies would be there right but the major uh, the, the major problem that these organizations face is they don't have the they don't have the resources or the right skill set uh a right skill set in their organization right and with that that the transformation delivery gap just goes on widening and widening and because of which 82% of business team say they need easy access to data and it capabilities right not every organization is blessed to have some good resources with them which would help them and their organization uh, you know my uh, uh, the transformation gap should be less and less right but they are not the situation is not that currently and only 37% of organization say that they have the technology and the skills to pace so if you think again you don't have the companies don't have that right amount of skill set right and even if you think in the market there are 10000 people out of 10000 people you will only find 1000 of them having the right skill having the right attitude right and this is where the companies suffer currently so this is a small scenario where we would be using an automation right currently a sales team creates and maintains sales data in salesforce and orders data in netsuite every time an opportunity record is updated to close one in salesforce they have to create a sales order for the products from that opportunity in netsuite right so how this automation is currently taking place uh in an organization let's uh, let's say that in nto or right nto is a standard trailhead example if you remember so over there the first the sales admin would create an opportunity record in salesforce send the email to the netsuite admin and with all the details about that opportunity record to create an opportunity in netsuite again they have to send a confirmation back to salesforce uh, admin that we have successfully created uh, the opportunity record okay in my net suite but from one to one perspective if your organization is very small then this can be uh, this can help you save some money but on the longer run as your company starts to expand sending hundred and hundreds and thousands of uh, emails having the salesforce record having having the salesforce uh, records uh, records in the sense the data about the customer you can easily now understand that this this is where the bottleneck uh, bottleneck exists right because the uh, the operations are not fully optimized right in when i started my uh, salesforce journey i was in a integration project and this was actually taking place in a very big mnc they were sending uh, emails uh, from uh, about creation of a record in my net suite and also in uh, salesforce right so the conversation were taking place in back and forth through email chains and you can now easily imagine that the if suppose uh, the admin are not uh, are not efficiently tracking the email chains then what would happen loss of opportunity records right and also loss of customers and no organization would want would want that right giving bad experience to customer this is where um, 
Microsoft automation truly expands. So previously, when Microsoft came into the market, they were known for the AnyPoint platform offering. But in the recent years, right in the past couple of years, Microsoft Composer and RPA two came into picture. Microsoft RPA was basically acquired by Microsoft. It was existing in the market with the name of Service Max, I think. And Microsoft acquired it, right? Salesforce acquired it and renamed it to Microsoft RPA. Now, what kind of solutions do Microsoft Compose or AnyPoint platform and RPA offer, which are very different? So, AnyPoint platform, you all already may be knowing that AnyPoint platform is used for integrating multiple systems, but it's not just simple integration. It's integrating efficiently so that we can onboard and deboard the systems very easily, right? And with uh, lesser of lower overhead, so uh, lower it, uh, yeah. So apart from any point platform, we also have Microsoft RPA. Now, why we need to use RPA, and when you will be used any point platform? RPA is basically for integrating uh, systems which don't have an API exposed, right? So if you remember, there are some companies still operating in the market, uh, market, and they have some big issues migrating from systems, right? And they are still using the legacy systems which don't have an API exposed, right? Like the programs written in COBOL. So they don't have an ex API exposed. So for that, we'll be using Microsoft RPA. And Microsoft Composer, Microsoft Composer is a low code integration platform where we can build integration solutions with just clicks and no code. And this is primarily used by people who don't have an uh, experience of building solutions or writing code, right? So this is where this small, I would say, ecosystem of Microsoft comes into place. AnyPoint platform, Microsoft RPA, and Microsoft Composer. I would give a standard example of how these three would work. Okay, I have seen a living example of it. So basically, if suppose my uh, sales team goes to marketing they write down sales data on a sheet of paper, right? In a handwritten format. Now you think that how can we input this data into my Salesforce, right? Into my Salesforce, because then we need to send the data to a person. The person has to manually enter the data into my Salesforce system, right? Yeah, into my Salesforce system. Now, if you think about this, this is not an efficient process. So how can Microsoft help you over automating this kind of solution? First, when we send an email, this would trigger my, either Composer can trigger it, either any point platform has the connectors which would trigger the process. Then it would send the lead sheet data to my Microsoft RPA. Now RPA has a capability called as OCR. I would highly recommend you to go through OCR and understand what OCR is, right? So OCR helps you uh, can successfully read the data, handwritten text in the handwritten text, and then it can process and make that into a machine readable format data. Now this data can again be sent to any point platform, then process the data. And if needed, we can also send it to composer where we can now create uh, uh, create data in my Salesforce by using Salesforce connector, which is already present in my Microsoft Composer, right? Those, this is how this currently the whole operation can work together in automating an end-to-end -end solution. Previously, it was not fully end-to-end -end because RPA was not there in the picture, but with RPA right now in the picture, we can integrate any type of systems automate anything, empower anyone, deliver success now. Now, this is the newest logo, I would say, a, a, a word to say in, in this Microsoft ecosystem, right? After having this entire Microsoft automation package currently in market. Three products, which one to choose? We discussed about what Microsoft RPA is, Microsoft Composer is, and AnyPoint platform, right? So, with simpler to complex, so Microsoft Composer is the most simplest thing uh, of is the most simplest uh, automation platform where you can build integration solutions. AnyPoint platform is in the middle and RPA. Why RPA is at the bottom since RPA is a UI based automation, right? It's not an API based automation. With UI based automation, the automations are very, uh, I would rather say they, if suppose the 
if suppose there are changes in the operations then again making changes in the rpa would be a very costly task if you say now we will only automate those solutions using musoft rpa which we think they don't have an api as exposed and second thing the operation is very stable it won't go on changing every now and then right but any point platform and composer stands in the top why composer again saying it's a no code integration solution right uh, a tool where you can build the no code integration solution and very easily you can build up the solution we already have the connectors available just with point and clicks you can build the muse of composer or you can build the solutions but any point platform is in the middle why because in any point platform there are some configurations which we need to do how many vcos you need to have uh, then what kind of api led connected to connectivity you need to have right you have to so in any point platform we top of the api layers one by one like from system uh, then process and then experience layer this is how any point platform is currently designed but any point platform is used for complex data processing whereas muse of composer is not and this is all about the these three products i would rather say now these are the what kind of personas it is involved when operating or using these kind of uh, products muse of composer is for admin and also for a developer i would say since we are not in we are not writing a code then this is the best fit tool for admin and developer now any point platform you need to have a developer mindset as said because sometimes you may, may you may not need to code but you need a developer mindset when using any point platform and the same goes for rpa as well you have pre built connectors in any point platform right Uh, like salesforce connector or sap connector you have all these connectors but there are some situations where you need to write the code right like using data we need to make data transformations in uh, in in any point platform right for that you need to have a developer mindset i would say but composer on the other hand as i said you don't have to do anything sort of it it's very simple and straight forward so the hierarchy goes from like simpler to the complex right means of composer on the top being very simple Muse of uh, any point platform is in the middle and RPA at the bottom. Now um, we would go through the implementation demo of what Muse of Compo Composer is and how we can build integration solutions using Muse of Composer. So currently, uh, let's go back to our trailed example, which is an NTO org, right? So currently, the NTO org has sent some has sent some part of their sales or marketing team. to an mall called a phoenix mall which is in mumbai currently okay they are just marketing about their products now they are writing down all the data in a google sheet currently right so uh, like the say all the lead example right the phone in e uh, email and all, everything otherwise they may be having a lucky draw and some kind of stuff where the user needs to uh, set, you know give that data to nto or uh, the i i mean the nto sales team or the marketing team they would enter their data in a google sheet now what we need to do is once the uh, once my marketing team or the sales team enters their data in the google sheet a new lead record should be created in salesforce and also i would also notify my sales team that this record uh, the new lead has been uh, you know uh, we have received a new a new lead in my salesforce uh, or right so with that now my sales team which is offshore currently okay can work on those like make some cold callings or some kind of stuff right also we can uh, not if not this then we can also use some other kind like marketing cloud for sending out targeted marketing to those customers right so we can also use that we have the marketing cloud connector in muse of composer so this is the very simple uh, lead i would say a lead generation process currently uh, we need to automate now these are some of the technical requirements or the questions we need to answer so do you interface with systems which have apis i would say yes so currently if you go back to the diagram so google sheets has apis exposed salesforce has apis exposed and slack also has api exposed so the answer to the first question is yes do you process documents or images currently no we just we just getting some simple data lead data create records in salesforce and then send the data to, uh, to my sales team over the slack channel so uh, then 
do you interact with websites or legacy systems no since muse of uh, not muse of but salesforce uh, google sheet and also my slack has apis right so the answer to the third question is no now do you need to perform complex data processing no if the answer to this was yes then instead of using muse of composer i would have went for any point platform because any point platform is very powerful in terms how we can process data in batches or some kind of that right so uh, another question do you need to integrate systems not supported by muse of composer no uh, currently we can only integrate systems which are which have apis exposed i would rather see so the answer to this is no now do you have extensive development experience no right because the scenario is very simple and straightforward and me as an admin i would think i don't have an extensive development experience right for i don't have the developer mindset currently so answer to this question is also no we successfully evaluated that yes muse of composer is the right tool to be used for this kind of automation right so another set of uh, uh, no uh, another set of questions which you need to answer as an admin the first question where does the data come from and where does it go so if you go back to the diagram the data originates from google sheet then the data is sent to salesforce and then to my slack channel right so uh, Uh, so the answer to this is data comes from google sheet goes to salesforce and slack then does the data needs to be filtered right now i am not filtering or uh, not filtering out the data since all the data is very important to me right so i can send now uh, some targeted ads or something like that now what transformation must be performed the convert the data in the format that salesforce and slack requires right so each system has their own way of creating records in their system right they would accept the data they would understand the, what the data contains and what you uh, know what needs to be created or what needs to be operated in the system right so we convert the data in the format that salesforce and slack requires two different circumstances require different actions Yes, relevant sales team must be informed depending upon the customer's interest. Right now, if I say this to you, uh, NTO is currently selling only scooter bikes, and also there are general inquiries about it. Right now, I have uh, no NTO has different sales team for bike, different sales team for scooter, and also different for sales team for just answering to general inquiries. Right, so we have three different Slack channels present. now the another question you need to ask yourself is determine the trigger run schedule so run after every new row is inserted in the lead google sheet right you need to also make sure when you want this uh, muse of flow tr should trigger i want it to trigger for each and new re lead record is inserted into my google sheet now this is the very must uh, i would rather say this is one of the most important step right Uh, which would help you designing your composer flow so you need to you can either use uh, some tools like draw.io or you can also use a pen and paper and draw it yourself this would help you to uh, understand uh, from uh, how you can design your uh, how you can design your flow in my composer right so if you if you see now a new lead record is added in google sheet once the new lead record is added into google sheet i would simply create a lead record in salesforce now depending upon the customer interest i would either push a message to my slack channel right uh, which is the sales team handling the bike or the sales team handling the scooter or the sales team answering to general inquiries so this is how i built uh, you know i designed right so this helped me to actually uh, design my composer flow yep Okay. Yeah. So this is my Muse of Composer instance. Now, when you go and create a new composer flow, composer flow, you would have these. Uh, I would rather say you have these two options. One is system event, and another one is scheduler. Now, if you want this Muse of Composer flow to be triggered when there is an operation that has taken place in an external system, uh, like in our case, whenever a new lead record is created in my Google Sheet or entered into a sheet, then this would trigger my Composer flow. Else, 
if i if i want this composer flow to be periodically run right it should periodic it should trigger periodically like for every 15 minutes or half an hour or one day and so so this is you need to decide what should trigger my composer flow so currently i'll just code system event and um, let me refresh this so you need to decide what kind of system is where from the data is originating origin, originating right so in my case the data is originating from google sheet so go to system event and right now if you can see i already have a google sheet uh, connector available right so i can simply go to google sheet and i have already authenticated or built a connection between my google sheet and my muse of composer but for you how you can do that just have to go and simply go and click on plus icon over here enter some name and then once you click on connect a new screen will pop up just enter your credentials or give the access to uh, access to the composer right to access your google sheet and once you have given the sufficient access every, everything is done you have simply built a connection between your google sheet and your muse of composer with just clicks you won't you know you don't need to do any kind of configuration right now so this is how you build a connection right so if i go and simply click on the existing connection which i have built now i can there are these kind of actions available now choose an event that starts this composer flow right so here i would simply go and say new row so for each and uh, every row that has, that has been entered in my google sheet this composer flow would trigger simply give what kind of spreadsheet it is now i would say leads phoenix model it is then worksheet name is sheet 1 so this is my this is the google sheet right so my composer flow is currently reading this google sheet now if you see these are the rows and the columns over here like the first name last name email phone number source company and interested right so so uh, if you see that this is the google sheet and this is the sheet 1 right so this is the worksheet name is sheet 1 spreadsheet it is lead sheet and all now in what kind of fields i want to i want to be available in my composer flow right so i will simply go and click on select fields so if you can see that these are the rows which are present so these are the columns i would say the company email first name interested in last name source and phone number you can see each and every column is present in this google sheet i can simply go and uh, click on uh, whatever fields i i need or i require in this composer flow right and simply go and click on apply once i do this uh, right now again i have to build a uh, connection between my salesforce right so if you remember once a new record on a new row has been entered a new row has been you know a data about a customer has been entered into a google sheet i want the lead record to be also created in salesforce simply go on click, click on the plus icon go on system action and right now if you see these are the list of connectors that are currently available in my muse of composer we have marketo we have jira we have slack twilio zora zendesk and every like uh, most of the systems which are currently you know uh, used by many of the companies like the box and uh, gmail as well so these are all the connectors available now we can see for salesforce we have two connectors available one is for salesforce crm and one is for salesforce marketing cloud i will simply go and click on the salesforce right now if you can see that again we have that uh, connection list present now these are the list of connections which have already uh, which is already present in my muse of composer instance uh, for you to create a new connection Uh, simply go and click on the plus icon. Now uh, you need to give some name over here, right? Give some name. Now once you give give some name, uh, if it is a sandbox in instance, check on this, right? Now it would I would be redirected to see. I'll show this to you. Now I am redirected to test dot salesforce dot com, right? We I need to enter the data about my sandbox, the password. Click on login, then click on allow. Okay. once you have done that uh i simply close this as of now yeah 
so once you have done that you have successfully uh, created a connection between your muse of composer flow and also uh, between a muse of composer flow and salesforce sandbox instance right if it is a production instance simply uh, remove this checkbox over here click on connect right enter your credentials currently these are the usernames which are currently using so uh, uh, so currently um, yeah i have already have a connection so enter your credentials over there like your username and the password and then you have successfully built a connection between your muse of composer flow and slack uh, and muse of composer flow and salesforce the same thing goes for slack as well right so for slack go to slack over here now this is already a connection present now i for for you to create a new connection simply go and click on the plus add new slack connection enter the name of your slack and click on connect right if you are a slack admin you can successfully uh, you know build a connect authorize and build a connection between a muse of composer flow and slack but now if suppose you are normal user then you can't do that because you need to have a special permissions in your slack uh, workspace right be, uh, without it you can't so be uh, be sure that you have the sufficient permission in your slack workspace as well now uh, this is already i already built this uh, compose i already built this composer flow right so if you remember this the google sheet is uh, is uh, you know would decide this connected would basically decide when my composer flow should be triggered over there i have simply entered new row leads phoenix uh, phoenix small sheet and over there in the worksheet with name which is sheet 1 now i have selected all the columns that are present in my composer flow then in my second action i would simply uh, you know create data in my production instance right so this is how i have entered now uh, what kind of data i, I want like what uh, record i want to create in my salesforce so these are the list of actions that are available in my salesforce connector create new record update record get records create or uh, update record delete record download file and upload file right now if you want to learn about download file and upload file and how you can you know transfer uh, files between two salesforce or i have created a video and you can just refer that as well uh, it's a very informative video uh, you know where we you know we can you have to use document upload link document content document link and all right so just it's very uh, interesting i would rather say right now see that uh, i am creating a new lead record in my salesforce instance with all the details right the row customer uh, the company last name email and first name phone number and so on right so whatever data i have entered in this google sheet would automatically be reflected in your as well create a new lead record in my salesforce instance now this is a standard if else condition right so so if you remember i have three sales team currently present okay one would be handling inquiries related to the bike another one for scooter and the third one is for general inquiry right so over here once uh, you know if in the interested column if i enter general or scooter or bike over here right so uh, based upon the condition if it evaluates to two if suppose the bike evaluates to true then the new message would be pushed to my slack channel right informing my nto bike sales team that hey sales brother we have received a new lead kind of look into this and all right so the same thing goes for this if uh, as if as block as well over here now just think of this as standard if else condition how we use in programming languages right if else if else if right in that if suppose one of the if condition evaluated true then other would not be evaluated right they would simply be skipped the same thing uh, the same logic goes over here if my this if uh, condition evaluated should true then these two if else block would basically be uh, would be skipped right so this is how it currently works now in same thing goes for in this if uh, if uh, else if block as well so just informing my sales team right but this time it's a scooter sales team and um, and now uh, in the else condition it's the general sales team right which which would answer to general inquiries now there are two things uh, two things when you are building this composer flow first thing you have to uh, test it with the sandbox and sandbox why because we just can't push this uh, flow into production right now it, 
the how we push this composer flow into production is very different than how we have in Salesforce, right? And we test the data with, you know, it's currently present in my sandboxes. Then I would push it to uh, a UAT sandbox or integration sandbox, and then I would push into production, right? But this is not in case of Musoft composer flows. Musoft composer flow, there are two flavors of Musoft composer flow. One is the standalone composer flow, which you are seeing right now. And another one is Musoft Composer Flow for Salesforce. So that Musoft Composer Flow would be added as a managed package in your production org, right? Now people would be like uh, very scared to install Musoft Composer Flow in production. Why? Because you know they would think that Musoft Composer Flow would now operate with production data, make some changes, which they are not. They are not. Uh, I would say they are nervous about it, right? They are nervous about it. Now you can go ahead and comp and purchase this composer for standalone composer flow instance as well. So, yeah. So this is all about how you have built this composer flow, right? Now, once you operate, you are very assured that yes, my composer flow works accordingly, right? How I want to, then you can simply go and change the connections present over here. Right now I have this EMEA production, right? If suppose it was a sandbox instance, I'll simply go click on change connection over here. I can decide uh, what kind of, you know, where this, uh, what Salesforce org should this lead record be created. Then I can point, I, I can move it from production, from sandbox to production, right? So once I have done that, once we have done all of these uh, configurations, right? And deployed to production. There are again two buttons present over here. One is the test and another one is activate. Now for uh, you know, how these uh, two button works is a bit different. Now for test, again, uh, once you're using with sandboxes, you, you know, you need to, you would be testing vigorously, right? To ensure that this composer flow is working accordingly. Now, if you click on the test icon, uh, in the background, a new mule application will actually be created and deployed to cloud hub, right? So this is, even though you are seeing this very simple uh, flow, in the background, all the heavy load is done by MuleSoft, right? So they create entire new apply, a mule application and deploy to cloud hub. And cloud hub is where we have mule runtime, which would basically help you to execute a MuleSoft application, a mule application. Now, uh, once I click on the test button, I have 10 minutes of time frame allocated for me to test this composer flow. Now, what I would do, I would simply go. Yeah, I have already these uh, data present. Simply I would okay. go here and yeah. So I have create, I have now just Think of this as my sales team has, you no, know, they got a, they actually inquired with the customer, got the customer's necessary details like phone number and all. Now this customer would be like a lead to me, right? So what I would do, create a lead record in my Salesforce org, then inform my sales team over the, over my Slack channel. So we can see that my Muse of Composer flow has identified that a new row has been inserted in the Google sheet. Now you can see all the data is present. Whatever data I had entered over here, you can see in this visual form, like the company Salesforce, Astro at the retest.com and so on. Now, if you see, I have successfully created this new lead record over here and it has returned me this Salesforce ID of the newly created lead record. Once we have done that, uh, then my Musoft composer flow would go to the standard if else block in the if block it uh, evaluated that yes the customer is interested uh, in bike now it has successfully informed my sales team right the the bike sales team that see we have received a new lead please uh, call the lead or do some kind of operation which you are supposed to do according to what kind of uh, operations uh, or what kind of things you have set up in your organization right now you so so see, we have uh, now my Muse of Composer has you know created and pushed this new uh, message to my Slack channel informing my bike sales team that see we have a new lead record. If I do click, if I simply go and click on open in Salesforce, let's see. If you see, 
we have successfully created this mule automation fifth feb right so this is how uh, you know end to end automation would basically look like in your mulesoft composer now uh, yes so going back to the ppt Now this is about what about error. This was my very first question when I explored Muse of Composer and how it would gracefully handle errors, right? So in uh, if you remember in my lightning flows, we have something called as fault lines where we can handle errors. In Muse of Composer, we don't have anything called fault lines or um, nothing sort of that. So till uh, I would rather say till mid of April, there were no error handlers present in my Muse of Composer. So even if your Composer flow would throw errors, there was no way to handle it, right? If suppose uh, my Composer flow ran once, it threw error for that same business use case. And uh, for the next same instance, it uh, like the business use case, it again threw an error. So there was no way to efficiently handle this kind of scenario. And also if you think that uh, in there is no such thing as rollbacks in my Muse of Composer. So because it, these are very di different systems, I would say like Google Sheets separate system. Once you send data to these systems, there is no way you can get the data back. You can delete the record, right? It's, there are no rollbacks available in my Muse of Composer. So you need to be very careful about these kind of scenarios as well. And because of which error handling is a very important was very important in my Muse of Composer. So this was the state of Muse of Composer before error handling, right? It was like a ticking time bomb. You don't know when it would burst out and through errors, right? Because of uh, absence of error handling. So this was actually introduced, I would rather say two weeks back, error, hand error handling in Muse of Composer, right? Now this error handler is currently in beta, uh, in the beta phase. So if you, Thing, if, if you remember in the beta phases, there may be some scenarios or circumstances that it would not work accordingly, but Salesforce is actually working on them, right? So if you, uh, you know, inform the team about this, uh, what kind of issues you have faced with error handler, they would actually go and try to fix that error, uh, that issue instant, uh, uh, like um, very much proactively, I would say that. Now in this error handler, there are two kinds of blocks available. One is the watch and another one is on error. In the watch block, it's simply as a try catch block, I would say. So if you remember in your programming language or something like that, we have like try catch and inside the catch, like we have also have the catch ladder, right? Which would basically handle different kind of catch uh, exceptions, right? So basically like if suppose I have system limit exception, we, we would basically handle it the last um, catch block, right? But we, we need to also handle some error, like exceptions like uh, numerical exception, something like that, right? So we have, so same thing, uh, the mechanism goes the very same for error handling in composer flows. So we have these two blocks in watch block would basically a try block where you would place uh, your connectors or the steps which you would think would throw an error and on error block is where, or the cache block is where you will catch those errors. Then there are again two kind of configurations available in my on error block. So first thing is the condition we have to set, right? So this condition is basically, if suppose I want to handle error, which has been sent by Google sheet, right? So I would, uh, I would simply go and set the condition such that this error has been, you know, this on error block would only uh, evaluate and run if the error has been thrown by Google sheet. Now, and now the second kind of option which you have is after running, right? Continue or stop. Continue means that if suppose my error handler, the watch block, the elements present in my watch block through an error. Now on error block would simply uh, catch that error. Once it caught the error, you uh, you may either want to my Muse of Composer flow to execute further elements or you want my Muse of Composer flow to you know, perform some set of actions and then stop over there. I don't want to execute uh, the actions which are present after this error handler block, right? So in our scenario, if we see that, if suppose my watch block uh, threw an error, on error block would basically catch the error based upon what kind of conditions you have set. Now based upon conditions, 
now it would now evaluate what what kind of behavior you want out of this error handler either continue like handle the error gracefully uh, perform some set of actions like informing the other like pushing out data from to other external systems right in our case i'm pushing the data to salesforce informing salesforce that yes there was kind of some error in my muse of composer now i would either uh, no uh, if suppose it is continue then it would simply go and execute this slack element as well otherwise it if if i click on stop then uh, it would not execute this slack element so this is how error handling currently works in muse of composer so i'll also give a small demo about this as well so yeah so this is basically my error handler currently so if you remember and watch block would contain the elements which according to you would throw an error right so in this watch block so see we have these two over here right so in this watch block we have three uh, like two element three elements present one is the salesforce again salesforce elements like connector over here which would basically getting records from my account object right with uh, i have for right time being as for demo perspective i have said this um, well i have hard coded this id over here right so it would basically return one lead one account record now i would simply go and update that uh, account record right so uh, if you see over here um, these two are two different salesforce instances now if you uh, if you give some uh, account or, or some object record over here which is nowhere related then it would basically throw an error right now let's test it up right so over here if you can see that um, so once this watch block throws an error my on error handler would basically execute it now the conditions uh, i would if you remember the conditions are something i would set right i want this on error block to only catch the errors which are thrown by particular system or a particular error right so i would set the condition over here now oh, i have said this after running as continue that means that whatever uh, actions that are present inside this would be executed and the error would be suppressed and now this uh, slack connector or the element would be basically executed now in this uh, the trigger context i have set is a new or updated record and object type as account now i would simply go so i'll simply go to my account and change the description over here right click on save now let my muse of composer uh, evaluate that yes uh, account was actually updated in my salesforce instance over here right now it would basically throw an error let's wait for it so i hope you are very much clear about this error handling block as well this uh, think this as of try catch block is um, but in the try catch block if error is thrown catch would basically you know catch the error and so i think it would suppress it right but over here we we have the options over here like continue and stop now if you see that muse of composer has identified that yes a new uh, account record was actually updated and see that test finish so here i can see that these are the uh, lead account record details over here which was updated right now so this actually threw an error so we can see that um, there was some other account account id not account other uh, orcs account id which was you know uh, mistakenly set over here because of which this error was thrown from my uh, salesforce org right the attempted operation failed and and the reference key the invalid cross reference key right now if you remember my on error block would execute now these elements would not be executed so we can see there is no tick mark over here that means this was not executed at all this uh, element was skipped so whichever element threw an error from this the afterwards element would not be executed and the error would be thrown on error block would basically uh, catch that error then execute this uh, slack element over here right so we can see it has successfully sent a message to my channel like muse of composer error handler over here with the message like about the error type and description and because this was set to continue uh, my um, the 
actions which are present outside this on error block was also executed so we can see a green checkbox over here as well right so so we can see these are the message which was pushed right there are type salesforce faulty response and uh, details about it right so you can see on error continue max the mule message received over here on error continue uh, max the mule message received on error continue so now this is about on error handler continue right now this is about the propagate now again uh, it's a very same mechanism that is present right but just showing you how it would work differently for these two uh, like on error propagate and continue over here uh, so this error handler is actually very if the if you have learned MuleSoft right in any point platform we have these two kind of error handlers like on error continue on error propagate and the mechanism works very similarly continue is where you would gracefully handle the error and would not throw error again and let the other actions execute but on error propagate is where it would uh, handle it would catch the error execute some certain steps and again throw the error right. So I would again go and okay. I'll simply go and click on save. Now let my Muse of Composer flow identify that yes, uh, account records updated. Now in the background, if I say this to you, my Muse of Composer would basically go on you no know, querying my Salesforce or right like pulling my Salesforce or and identifying that yes account was actually updated or created in my Salesforce org and right now it has identified that yes account was actually updated and again it would throw the error over here um, so this not this but this block uh, through the error like right? the attempt failed like again the same it's not a valid Salesforce ID over here and uh, the honor was in the on error block caught the error after running is set to stop so it executed this slack element but it did not execute this slack element because it handled the error uh, executed certain steps that are present in this on error block again it threw an error so that's why we got the test finished with errors over here right so again i will move back error handler and we can see this is the error type what i have said error type error description but this block did not execute and this is all about error handling in my means of composer this is a new feature which is present right the other another feature is if suppose you have built the entire means of composer right now you have set the connections to uh, pointing towards sandbox now you have to uh, deploy it to production right use it to production data uh, now if sub because there are no concept of reusability you the composer would be very long the flows would be very long now for this scenario it looks short but for some scenarios this would be very huge right so changing connections again and again would be very difficult what you can do is uh, so click on the settings icon and we have these two new options available export and import if you click on export it would basically download uh, this muse of composer which is present in a json json format right so again what i can do is go to flows click on new flow create flow from scratch uh, click on the settings icon again import beta select flow I'll go here, right? So we can see that uh, no, I imported this uh, flow over here. Now this is a way where you can also share your composer flow outside this composer flow instance as well, right? So now you you have built some a composer flow uh, which you want with you, right? While leaving the organization as well, you want to keep this flow where you can use it for the future. You can download this composer flow that it would be present, the data would be present in a JSON format. Now, when you upload this composer flow, my composer flow instance would actually be, uh, parse it out, understand like what, what uh, I know what is what kind of connectors are present in my composer flow right now I, I can now simply go and click on any on any one of it right and yeah click on import flow now you see that 
it's one and the same but what you did you have successfully you know um, saved your time and changed the connection and pointing it from sandbox to production right so this is how you would also deploy uh, this is a deploy mechanism in a composer flow right it, your composer would be present directly in your production or production instance if suppose you are using muse of composer for salesforce otherwise you can also go for this standalone standalone instance now again uh, this is another part where if suppose you have activated your muse of composer right so we have this list view available which is the run history list view in this list view you can see what uh, if suppose your muse of composer flow through an error then it would have the status as fail and if suppose everything executed as normal then the status would be success with no error present over here you can filter this out based upon date or based upon status as well so there are 26 connectors, I would say, not 26, because right now, uh, as we go on talking about it, uh, if I'm not wrong, every month Salesforce or uh, Microsoft actually um, you know, makes a connector available, right? So the count must be somewhere from 28 to 29 connectors or 30 as well, currently in my Microsoft Composer. Now, uh, again, there are two things to add over here for connectors as well. So, uh, so click on, uh, so, okay. So this is the plus icon or click on the plus icon for connectors system action, right? So these are the list of connectors. And right now, if suppose you have an system which has APIs exposed, but there are no connectors available, right? So what you can do, you can simply uh, use HTTP connector. In this HTTP connector, we, I, I already have these kind of you know configurations present right now. But yeah, you can you can basically use call make a call out to that API using HTTP connector as well. So yeah, so this is all about HTTP connectors. Like what kind of connectors are present in my Muse of Composer. Now key consideration using Muse of Composer. Before that, I just want to show you uh, this. So if you remember, I had built one, if you are connected with me on LinkedIn, I had actually built one composer flow and what this composer flow would basically do, right? It was automating this ticket booking process in India to remain. Currently the process is closed down, but I can show you this is how a muse of composer flow I had created right now. What would happen? See, again, the steps are very same. Uh, create like it would identify that a new uh, a new row has been you know inserted in my Google Sheet. Now make the data available over here as well, like the city, emergency, and all the contact details present. Right now, what it will do is this is my Microsoft RPA. Now uh, this is RPA, right? If you remember, RPA is like uh, accessing legacy systems or systems which don't have APIs exposed. What I am doing, I am passing the data to this Microsoft RPA. Now my Microsoft RPA would basically, uh, you know, understand, get the data from this, trigger it out, then it would uh, simply do the UI automations present, right? And then once it is done, I would simply push a message to my Slack channel saying that, yes, uh, no, the trailblazer booking confirmed for the attendee, right? So, so, okay. Yeah, so we see that uh, no, currently um, since the booking process has stopped, but this is one of the instances where I had run this flow, composer flow, and we can see that this message was actually pushed to my Slack channel like, hey, Trailblazer booking confirmed from coding the developer organization India Dreaming. So this is how we can also trigger MuleSoft RPA from my MuleSoft composer as well. Now there are key considerations when using MuleSoft composer. First thing, there are no concept of reusability. Now, if you have worked with lightning flow, you remember there is something called as auto loan flow where you can simply create some reusable flows and you can make, you know, call flows, uh, that auto loan flow from anywhere, right? So you can, you are simply making this flow reusable, but there is no such concept as reusable in Composer, right? So it is one entire flow where you will have all the elements present. Uh, now, there are also no sandbox where sandbox uh, in like, uh, I would say there are no sandboxes present for Microsoft Composer. It would basically be uh, installed in your production org 
else it can also go for a muse of composer stand alone instance no versioning you see you just simply create one flow if you want to create another version of the flow you need to actually create a new flow uh, new flow and you can already know how you can right there is a simply a clone button you can also use that right so there is also no versioning of composer flow like how we have in the lightning flows again it's not real and near real time but like it's not it's a real it's near real time but not 100% real time right so uh, it would basically poll my salesforce org in our case for every 10 seconds to understand that yes this compose yes the account was actually updated or the uh, yeah account was actually updated or this new row has been entered in the google sheet right so for every 10 seconds interval it would basically poll then each record processed to a target system would count as each task now this goes on the pricing uh, mechanism which you have placed in muse of composer right or what your organization has currently purchased now there if i am not wrong there are 2.5 million task records available with the basic uh, pricing of muse of composer right so you have to uh, efficiently use those task records as well now this is not meant for bulk data operations or very high data intensive operations now for bulk data operations and high very high data intensive operations muse of the any point platform is a right tool to be used over here right so uh, for licensing for licensing right for purchasing muse of composer you can either purchase muse of composer or you can also purchase muse of composer muse of rpa and also any point platform all in a single bundle as well but again there are certain uh usage limits as well right now how many like uh, for how much data you can process in your composer flow and everything right so it also depends upon those what kind of pricing or what kind of uh, you know price uh, what kind of tier you have purchased on muse of composer now how to get started with muse of composer now uh muse of composer is not freely available what you have seen is you uh, know it's not a free tool right as of now but uh, muse of actually is conducting these workshops once in a month the last workshop which was there was i think in the march in the month of uh, february after that they haven't conducted workshop but what you can do if your company is a partner to salesforce then you can uh, reach out to salesforce account executive and secure the access to muse of composer right so there are also trail mixes available and one tool which would greatly help you to understand and visualize muse of composer is the trailer simulator present right you can find it find this in trailer module as well like if i'm not wrong it is for salesforce and slack uh, module where you can find this trailer simulator available uh please to join this trail based a community forum as well the muse of composer right so if you have any doubts regarding muse of composer just post it out here and um uh, you may be lucky that the product managers of uh, product owners of muse of composer would uh, would actually answer to your questions and get it resolved as soon as possible as well so yes this is all about from muse of composer now i would request that if you can scan this qr code and fill a google a google form right uh, so this would actually help me to uh, make my content better understand what changes i need to do in my content presentation and in the future you can see them as well so i would basically request you to scan this qr code enter some uh, i won't be capturing your person information everything would be like very simple plain questions right how did you like a session and not right about feedback about the session and how it can be improved just take 2 minutes of your time and just fill it out it would help me to uh, present my content in more in much better way uh, with that um, thank you uh, thank you everyone for staying tuned and joining on uh, saturday for learning muse of composer thank you thank you so much mikesh it was a wonderful session i must say like be having a 2 plus year experience this session was amazing and the way you explained it it is superb so thank you for you know being a part of this community group and delivering such an amazing session to us thank you sir pleasure is all mine same here yeah
so uh, we'll wait for another minute currently we don't have any questions in the q a tab so if people can post some questions or you have some questions uh, we are having like we'll be waiting just some seconds so you can post your questions in the q a tab if anyone is having questions i think some people left uh, around uh, you know, some time back i mean there are already <laughs> concurrent sessions taking place yeah, 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 I just came to know that there are multiple sessions going on for other. I think one is for India to remain. Another one was... Kupadu. For... Yeah, Kupadu is also conducting some sessions. And there was also one more session on uh, get, I think, in Mumbai trailblazer community. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah.